Okay, uh, so the subject of my talk today is about a very well-known technique for solving uh, hard problems. <clears throat> the name is simulated annealing, and I will try to explain this because uh, we at Caesar System uh, have a, an application that sometimes have to solve some uh, problems that are very hard. Uh, meaning that uh, there is no solution that can be achieved in normal execution times that we have. So what to do with this case? So this is not something new. This is something we learn, I learned, and I want to share with people because I want to uh, call everybody's attention on something that uh, I realized in the last years that we have to pay more attention, and this is probabilities. Uh, there is a lot of uncertainty around our models and every project and probabilities play a central role and are our friends to uh, face uh, uncertainties. So there is something about probabilities here and so Okay. So, uh, we can say that there are two kinds of problems. Easy problems from the computational capabilities that we need and hard problems. And when I say hard, I say inherently hard. I mean things that you cannot make easier. It's proved mathematically that you cannot make easier. So, but uh, sometimes very hard problems have so optimal solutions, solutions you will never accept, but are solutions, but are so, so optimal that you cannot accept them. And, but there are many of these. There are many suboptimal sub solutions. So the idea is, could we combine suboptimal solutions and find something that is optimal or close to that? Where is people that? <laughs> <laughs> so this is the, the most famous uh, problem in this kind of hard domain. The traveling salesman problem. Okay? This is a, a guy that has to visit a number of cities and come back home. And what route 
should the guy take uh, because different roads take different distances. So which is the best one? This problem is hard. It's really hard in the sense that it is NP-complete. cannot be solved in, with any algorithm unless the algorithm takes exponential time. So let's see an example because so let's assume we have to visit 25 cities. 25 is a, is a small number. It seems easy to, to manage with the computer, right? Now this is a problem of this size. Here we have 20, 25 cities. Okay? So let me This is a, a random generator of 25 cities, okay? So uh, let's pick any configuration, this one for instance, and let's start solving the problem. I will leave this here and come back to the presentation, but uh, before that, let me capture this graph in one of the initial states. Okay, so we can compare it at the end. So let's go back here. So uh, if you do your math, you will discover that the number of uh, possible pathways for 25 ci uh, cities is 24 factorial. And what is 24 factorial? You can write a small 24 factorial and see the number, but I want to understand how much is it. So, assume you have a fast computer that can analyze one million paths every second. Okay? This is pretty fast. So, we will divide uh, 24 factorial by one million. Then, okay, and how many seconds are there in an hour? This, this number, okay? 3,600. So let's divide by this number to get not the number of seconds, but the number of hours. Okay, and how many hours is there in a day? 24. So let's divide by 24 to get the number of days that this computation will take. And how many days are there in a year? 365. So let's divide by this number to count the number of years that we need to uh, solve the 25 cities problem, okay? Okay, but we are in the cloud computing world, okay? So we are in the cloud. Why should we restrict to one computer? Let's buy one computer to every human being in the entire world. So let's use this amount of computer, 7 billion computers, the fast one. Okay? <laughs> because I'm very interested <laughs> in this solution. So if you divide 24 factorial for all of these, what you get is two years. Two years, the entire planet running <laughs> this very fast computer. So it's a lot. 24 factorial is a lot. You cannot solve that with technology. You have to think. Okay? <laughs> so, what... <laughs> so, uh, 25 cities is 2 years. 26 cities is 50 years. 27 cities is 1,300 years. And 28 is 35,100 years. So you can, this grows dramatically fast. Okay? So let's try to see how our solver is doing. Well, it's done. Okay? <laughs> but so let's uh, it's 
probably not the best solution. It's pro for instance, here, maybe it, this was better. But it's close enough to a very good solution. If you compare this with uh, the other one, This is, there is a lot of uh, entropy here. There is a lot of chaos in, in the original setting. And it, this gets simplified. Okay? And, uh, well, let's, let's go here again. So, this, how? This uh, uh, simulator anil algorithm works. It works uh, in a very simple way. It's what it does is, is, is this. It's, for instance, this is for the cities. Assume that you arrange the cities in a simpler way. This, this is not on the map, it's just on your mind. Uh, so then uh, the algorithm takes two cities at random and then it twist the circle in a way that you reverse these two cities. So the first part you uh, go in the original path uh, order and then you reverse the order and that path. So from, one, from any configuration you do this and go to the next configuration. Okay? And this is random. I just select two cities at random. So you do this many, many times. So every time you do this, you compare. Is the twist better than the original or is not? If so you compare and based on that you accept or reject the twist. If the twist improves, so you have a shorter pathway, then you accept the twist and try again with another twist. But uh, if it is uh, um, worse, then you reject, but not always, with certain probability. There is certain probability to accept something that is worse. Okay? This is the central part. So, and the probability you use decreases with some parameter that we think as the temperature. So, uh, you start with a pretty high temperature and start decreasing gradually the temperature and with the temperature, the probability to accept things that do not improve decreases. So, at, at the beginning, you accept many things that are worse than the original, but uh, that the previous state, but um, in that, in, in that case, you are uh, giving the system a chance to look for crazy things, okay? So this goes like this with a fixed temperature and eventually you decrease the temperature. So the probability to do crazy things is uh, small. So this is what we already have seen about how this gets simplified. So, the idea is that the entropy decreases with random mutations that you can control somehow. So, the, here is an, an analogy why this works. Because, imagine you have a, a jar with balls inside, or a box with uh, stones, and you have, some are small and some are big, different sizes. So, you jake this like crazy, so anything Anything can happen, any configuration can happen. Then you start decreasing the intensity, decreasing gradually, gradually uh, uh, until you stop. So when you stop, what happens is that <coughs> something like this. The small balls go to the bottom and the bigger ones go up because the smaller can go in the gaps, between the gaps. Okay? So, this is what makes that entropy, uh, what makes entropy decrease uh, if you control the mutations. So, this is when you um, 
decreases the temperature, you are giving less energy to the system to do crazy things. <laughs> Is that understood? Okay. So, this is more technical, but I want to explain this problem because this is the... So you can apply that, this to many kinds of problems, many different kinds of problems. So this is uh, something that uh, we use in, in our system. If you have two random variables, and you sample the variables, uh, then you will get uh, different uh, values for them. For instance, in this case, I took a normal distribution variable with mean 16 and standard deviation 10, and a log normal one. No. So I got two samples, but, uh, 20, 24 uh, elements in each, to compare with the cities. So <clears throat> the correlation is the, uh, there is a, um, um, a number uh, defined with mathematical formula that measures the correlation between these two variables. The variables are not totally independent. So you, have, you want to model that the dependency, a little dependency, the, the, name is, the technical name is correlation. So the idea is that when you sample, you get something uncorrelated because the samples are independent. But your model requires some correlation because you know that uh, th those quantities are correlated. So, uh, in this case, we started with a, a small correlation, and we wanted a bigger correlation, 0.7. So, from this to this, how could we do that? Well, the technique is to uh, <coughs> try with permutations of one of the <coughs> samples. So you take one of the samples and do some permutation. Then uh, compute the, the the correlation and check whether it uh, approaches your goal or not. But again, the number of permutations here is 24 factorial, which is a lot. Okay? This two year thing. So you can map for that. So how can you do that? Okay, you use an elite, this technique. And the technique now is not twisting the circuit, now is swapping two entries in one of the samples. So you um, take any two columns and uh, interchange two values of the second sample, for instance. And then you accept our improvement. Improvement is you compute the calculate the correlation and check whether it's closer to your goal or not. And in that case, you accept the, the, the swap. Uh, if the swap is worse, takes you far away from your objective, then you probably accept that, and the probability will decrease with the temperature. Okay? <coughs> so, uh, this is the result. This is what I got. Is I wanted 0.7 and I got this. It's, it's enough. Okay? So, we can. Uh, select here the correlation problem. <clears throat> uh, I would take uh, I don't know, this one, for instance. <clears throat> <clears throat> and this line, so here in this example, I, I want a correlation of this uh, point 0.75. <clears throat> and here you can see the, the actual correlation. I will refresh this. So let this run in. It's slow. The algorithm is instantaneous. What is slow is that I'm drawing uh, in any way everything at every iteration. Okay. Okay. Let's go back. <laughs> so, but the idea is that <coughs> you get you reach your goal, whatever it is, uh, in few steps. And uh, there is a technical thing that I don't want to mention now because I don't have time. But uh, the idea is that uh, you start with some independent samples, 
And then, as you can see, these samples have the tendency to align to um, a straight line with that uh, um, uh, correlation. So, you can see it for real when the, the other thing ends. So, <coughs> this graph measures the progress. The red uh, line is the temperature. You can see how the temperature decreases. This is the control we put to uh, give the system uh, less energy as we proceed. And the, the green line is how far I, I get from my goal. So for instance, here the goal was to reach uh, this number here, which was uh, 0.75. <coughs> so you started somewhere, and started to do permutations and check again how far or close you are. So going up and down means uh, going toward the, the goal or going uh, in the opposite direction, okay? So, but uh, the algorithm allows that. So at the end, with less temperature, the <coughs> variations decrease and eventually you get to the minimum or to the optimum, okay? <coughs> so let's check. So here, what is happening here, I have one sample on this axis, the other sample on this axis, and what we are doing is trying permutations here, only in this one. And uh, uh, so you can see we are pretty far away from our goal, which is this. Uh, it looks like, like it is not working. Okay? That's because this is still going up and down uh, many times. Okay? So, How do you model this in small talk? Because the interesting thing here is that um, the way I'm showing you is like a laboratory when you can add more examples and try to understand uh, the parameters of the, of the simulation to, to, to reach the, the solution. Okay? Because what I described are the general ideas of, of, the, of, the, of the algorithm. But actually, there are several parameters that you have to take into account, like the speed at which you decrease the temperature, the number of iterations you make uh, before decreasing the temperature, because you don't decrease the temperature all the time. You, you try one temperature several, several times uh, doing uh, mutations of your solution, and then you decrease the temperature. So these two variables, how many times should I cycle inside uh, for one given temperature? And uh, at what pace should I decrease the temperature? Are the two main problems here that you have to determine for your problem? The literature brings many hints and uh, possibilities, but until you work in one problem, you, won't, you, you don't know. So this is not magic. Here is where, where you have to pay attention, because the modeling this in small talk is very easy. You have uh, one hierarchy for the problems. So the problem can be the salesman problem, can be the correlation problem, and many others that maybe I, I can show. So you have an abstract combinatorial problem, and from that uh, abstract class, you have all the particular classes that uh, you are interested in. Uh, then, uh, for instance, the Sesman problem, the box problem, I will show in a minute, uh, the correlation problem, and many more. So, this is one hierarchy of the small dot design. Okay? The class problem, the abstract, and all the problems below. Then, you have the algorithm. The algorithm uh, 
is uh, have particular things for uh, every program. But the good news is that most of the logic gets implemented at the abstract level. <coughs> so when you, for instance, you have this uh, the algorithm, uh, the subclasses just implement a couple of methods. Very, very, very simple. So this is a wonderful framework. So uh, you need, for instance, a specific solver for the correlation. And uh, this is an example. And then you have the cooling device. Because the cooling device, there is a simple one that decreases the temperature because it multiplies the, the temperature by a number of less than one as every uh, step. Or you can have much more sophisticated uh, cooling devices. So you can have many cooling devices and try which one uh, is better for your problem. Okay? So you have these three hierarchies. Uh, the, the problem hierarchy, uh, the, the solver hierarchy, and uh, the, the cooling device. But uh, the cooling device, you um, usually use a, a very a simple one, or you can have uh, several, but you don't have to write the cooling device for every problem. You have three or four cooling devices, then you have many problems and you try which one is, is better. So the only work you have to do is to uh, write this, 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 uh, sorry, this uh, problem, to describe your problem. So let's see. Okay, it's finished, and it's, it reached its goal. You see, the, the correlation is now 0.75, and this is what I want. Okay, that's very good. <laughs> okay. Five minutes. Five minutes, it's okay. So let me show you another problem. For instance, this one. Uh, this is a, a toy version of the problem. Uh, the real problem is to have, I don't know, a number of boxes and to put them together uh, in a small area without overlapping. So, in this case, I have, I'm uh, playing with six, but uh, in general you, you will have, I don't know, 100 or 1,000 or something like that. So here the idea to solve this uh, is to move uh, the, the boxes around and check every time the total area you need to contain all the rectangles, okay? And uh, the final solution doesn't admit overlapping, but the intermediate one, ones, I allow them to overlap. Uh, the algorithm runs better in this case. So, uh, the idea is that the amount of overlapping that is allowed um, decreases as the temperature decreases. So at the end, when it is frozen, the temperature is zero, so there is zero overlapping. Okay? So uh, I didn't play a lot with this, but uh, in general, it gives acceptable uh, results. Uh, the idea is that I, uh, if you need this for a real problem, you will probably have many more constraints that overlapping. Maybe you don't want to put something on the left or something else or whatever. And this is a big message I want to tell you. <clears throat> Most of the optimization problems or, or hard problems have a lot of constraints in real life. If you have a real application, an industrial application, then the problem is with constraints. For instance, not every road are the same. And not, uh, not all possibilities are equivalent. So some constraints say you cannot go in that direction, and you can, or you have to pay toll, or whatever. Uh, so another important uh, characteristic of this technique is that once you have it running for a toy pro version of your problem, you can add, in theory at least, at least constraints. And the, the way the constraints impact your model is very, are in general, very simple. You can't 
easily express your constraints because when you produce some mutation, you can check whether the mutation honors all the constraints or not. If it doesn't honor the constraints, you reject that. So it's very easy to add constraints. And constraints are the main problem in these kinds of situations. So, but this is the first time I'm using this tool, so uh, that's why. Uh, and there's uh, some lack of uh, synchronization between what I say and what you see. <laughs> Because I want to say something, and this tool wants to show something else. <laughs> so, but I, I told this time, this time. Well, okay, one, one more thing for easy problems. It is only for very hard problems. No, it's not. For easy problems, you can do the same. If you have a very easy problem and you don't know how to implement that, a solution. Use this, and the easy problem is solved. Very, very, without understanding a lot of things. Okay, and uh, this is one example. The the queen's problem. I don't have time to, to show this. Uh, let's go. So, just the conclusions. <laughs> so this technique has some pros and some cons. The pros are that it's very easy to implement. Even the framework, very easy. And once you have the framework, it's very easy to add more things. Uh, it's friendly with constraints. You can add constraints. And it's flexible and tunable. Okay? You, you can change uh, the speed or pace at which you uh, freeze. And the guns, is this is the same. It's too flexible and too tunable, so you have to spend a lot of time uh, finding the right solution. That's all.